Welcome to the aggressive life. If you've been listening to this podcast for any length of time, you know that aggression means defaulting to movement. And movement means you eventually get tired. That's where Jared Lopez lived. Lopez or Lopes? I'm so sorry, Jared. How do I say your last name? Story of my life, man. Uh, it's Lopes. <laughs> Lopes. Okay. Lopes. It would be s- such a more sexy name if it was Lopez. Anyway, that's where Jared Lopez lives. He he isn't just tired. He's dad tired. Or as I might say, he's dad freaking tired. Father's Day is just around the corner. And it has to be the holiday with the most caveats. Well, it's not for everybody. Not everybody has a dad. You might not be a dad. You might have had a dad. You might be on a crappy dad. <laughs> no, no holiday has more caveats than Father's Day because a lot of dads haven't done a great job in that role and a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot whatever, whatever, whatever. There's a lot of beating guys up, which is a bummer. Today, we don't want to beat guys up. We want to aggressively affirm you today if you're a guy who's here at the aggressive life. This isn't this isn't churchy church podcast, but I am a pastor by day. So let me say that most of the church calls quote unquote men's ministry, but it isn't ministering to men. It's putting on them expectations and baggage and programs that they're just not interested in at all. That's why I'm excited for our guy here today. He, he he doesn't believe in the church's messaging of, hey, stop doing this or be better at this or don't look, don't touch or it'll fall off or some such thing like that. Manhood, manhood becomes a moving target that nearly no one can hit. And then we wonder why guys are checked out. Then we wonder why at least 70% of everybody coming to a church, most churches, is female. And then we wonder why, if you want to actually reach men, you actually have to have a great Mother's Day service because they'll actually bring their man along with them. When it's Father's Day, the guys say, honey, I don't want to go to church today. And a little woman says, oh, that's okay. So to all the dads out there, no matter your age, your kids' success levels, or even how good or crappy you did for them, you should leave today feeling a bit encouraged, equipped, and cared for. At least that's what I'm looking to do. That's an aggressive move. Jared is a husband. He's a father. He's a founder of Dad Tired, a nonprofit described as, quote, a community of men taking their faith, family, and marriage very seriously. He's an author. He's a speaker. He's a podcaster. He's a voice for men. Welcome, not Jared Lopez, Jared Lopes. That's good to be with you, man. I appreciate it. Jared Quick Lopes. Introduction. Lopes. I, I've yeah, never it's known. Por- it's Portuguese. It's Portuguese. So it is. We, uh, yeah. Well, uh, but I mean, literally every day, every day I'm getting called Lopez. So I'm, <laughs> well, I'm used to it. Lopes just, I don't know, man. I just, Lope. well, Portuguese is, is very near Hispanic. Whenever I hear someone speaking Portuguese, I think they're speaking in China, or in, could be, may as well be Chinese. I think they're speaking Spanish, but it's actually two different languages. So maybe that's another example. Lopez, Lopez, Lopes. Is there some like geographical or cultural similarity between Portugal and Spain? Yes. Uh, I, I couldn't give you all the history, but I know that there are, there is some, it's common in the Portuguese language to take the Z's and turn them into S's. Oh. Um, why they do that? I, I don't know why, but I wasn't close to my dad speaking to men. Uh, I wasn't close to my dad. And so I don't know a lot about my dad's side. I don't, I don't have a lot of historical context for my heritage. I wish I did. I've tried to look into it, but um, it's a lot of scarce information for me to pull from. Well, let's start with your father wound then. What do you mean you didn't know a lot about your dad? Tell us about yourself. Yeah, my dad, uh, he he bailed when I was three. So he's a professional musician. And uh, he and my mom got together when they were young. I think he was playing at some nightclub and uh, my mom caught his attention. He caught my mom's attention. I'm not sure what, but they ended up um, dating for a while, had my sister first and then had me not married. And I think my dad tried to play the dad role the best that he could for as long as he could and just realized like that, I don't think I'm ready to settle down. He really enjoyed his life as a musician and getting the attention of a lot of women. And so he stuck with it and um, ended up taking off. I, I'm not sure who, if he decided like I'm fully out or if he was making some bad decisions and my mom just said, you know what, just get out. You're, you're kind of worthless around here. Um, but regardless about when I was about three years old, 
I maybe saw him once or twice a year growing up. And um, is he still alive right now? He is. Yeah, we've God has restored that. I don't know how how much you want to go down that path, but the, it's been a. Um, I do. It's been an interest. Yeah, it's so I when when I got married, uh, I went through a really terrible season in my own life. Um, I was planting churches. I was a pastor, and it was. I went through one particular church plant that was really, really hard with a guy who I thought was a friend. I'd heard people say I'd been in ministry for, I don't know, close to 10 years at that point. And, but I had heard people say they had been hurt by the church, but I had never personally experienced anything hurtful. So I was just kind of like, ah, it must be you. (laughs) If you've been hurt by the church, it's probably on you. And then I had got hurt by somebody in leadership above me and it really, really messed with me. And, uh, and so I kind of went through it. I was, I was tail spinning just my identity. Like, who am I? I've always worked in the church. I've always been called pastor. Now I'm not, this guy said, I'm not even qualified to be in ministry. I suck at ministry. I'm not good enough. And so the, really he made a lot of identity statements. And so I was going through my own stuff and my marriage was falling apart. I, I sucked as a husband and as a dad, I was just, I was disengaged. And I sincerely thought we were going to end in a divorce. I was planning now, I was looking divorce lawyers and how we would plan out you know, who's going to get custody of whom and all that. And my son was three at the time. There was one particular day, my wife and I were fighting, which we fought a lot during the season. And I said something to her on purpose to hurt her. Like I, I was trying to jab her and she got tears in her eyes. And, but she said, Jared, I've been waking up at two in the morning, every morning. And I've been praying that God would capture your heart again. And for whatever reason, God used that moment to really break down the walls that I had been building up all these kind of Macho. I'm trying to be really tough and act really strong, but but I, I was trying to portray being really tough, and and God used that to really break down those walls, and I ended up going to counseling, and uh, which I I never wanted to do. I I figured like I already know I'm a crappy dude. I don't need to pay somebody to tell me I'm a crappy dude. That's how I view counseling. <laughs> right. And uh, and I went, and so at that time, my dad happened to call randomly. We weren't even talking. We we very very rarely talked. But he called and he said, hey, Jared, I'm coming up to your neck of the woods. He lived in California. I lived in Oregon. He said, I'm coming up to your neck of the woods. I'm, I'm married now, which was, I was like, I don't even know, you know, what? Okay. And he said, I'm married now and I'd like to introduce you to my new wife. So he comes up for dinner. I haven't talked to him in years. I'm going through this terrible moment in my life. I'm ready to get divorced. I've got a son who's my age, that, who was the age of, uh, that I was when my dad left. So I got all this emotional stuff happening. And I just unload on them and, and not like mean way, but I was just like, dad, I just need to like, I forgive you. I'm not mad at you anymore, but I just need to know how in the world could you have bailed on me? I have a son that's three years old and I can't imagine bailing on him. So I just need to know how you could bail on me. And, uh, and man, he owned it like a man. He did not make a single excuse. He said it was the biggest regret of his life. And um, he thought about it every single day. He wishes things were different. And he said, you know, I'd be happy to tell you more of my side of the story, but just know I'm sorry. And that was, man, like that started a, a just restoration between he and I. And so now we talk all the time. We talk several times a week. Uh, when I traveled to go speak, he came with me on Father's Day last year. I was doing oh, some wow. TV interviews and he came with me, traveled around the country with me. And uh, it was really fun. But God, it was a messy story that God is redeeming. Well, that's a pretty self-aware guy to be able to give you that response in that moment. A lot of guys say what you say to a father figure who's wounded them and the father figure can I mean, handles that conversation awfully. Your dad has got more going for him than you would have thought with that situation. I don't, I don't know if uh, at any other time he would have been able to handle it that way at any other time in his life. But I think and again, just the sovereignty of God, the way that everything happened to work together at the right time. I think what I was going through in my life and what he was going through in his life, it was just a perfect collision for me to feel hurt, place it before him. And he was in the spot that he was able to have the humility to really own it. And so um, I, I just think there was bigger stuff happening, you know, in both of our lives that that made it possible. So is that the moment you went back and you said your wife, hey, I'm going to we're going to keep working on this because I don't want to leave due to my three-year-old son, what I had done to me. Was it that obvious to you? I had already kind of, you know, when she said, I've been waking up at two in the morning praying for you. I was like, man, what am I doing? Like, I'm just, I, I think a lot of men try to mask their hurt with anger because we don't really know what else to do. Like we, we just try to act really mad, but anger is usually the second emotion. We usually have something else going on under behind the anger. And so when she said that I couldn't slam a door, 
you know, what am I going to say? My wife says he's getting up in the middle of the night and praying for me. What am I going to do? Slam the door, yell at her, say something else <laughs> mean. You know, it's like, right. I'm not that low life. And so I was just like, what am I doing? And I, so I had made the decision. I'm going to stay married. I want to stay married. I, and this is going to be a long road. But yeah, that was, that was a huge part of my healing um, was that conversation with my dad, which happened, you know, very quickly after that. How long ago was that? Oh man, this was before I started any of this ministry, which I would say God tricked me into this because I had no plans to get back into ministry. So that would have been close to eight years ago now. Eight years. Yeah. So tell me how you got into the this this place with where you are. How, what was the progression? And first of all, before you do that, tell us about dad tired. Yeah, well, it's kind of, it, both of those questions kind of lead to the same answer, which is uh, I had no plans to be in ministry ever again. I was going to just start businesses and kind of do my own thing. And, um, but in the middle of that, that season of hurting and, and trying to be a better husband and dad, I just started to process online, um, which I'm not, I wasn't a blogger. I didn't even like, <laughs> I didn't have a, like a blog. Nobody was following me. Nobody's reading anything. We I used said. to call bloggers I, bluesers back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 By blog. I mean, like I wrote a, 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 a journal post on, on word document for my friends to see on <laughs> Facebook, you know, like yeah. it wasn't a blog. And so I, I did that. I was just like, man, I, I feel like I suck as a husband and dad, but I don't want to, I want, I don't want to give up on my kids. I got to figure this thing out. I just kind of wrote that. I shared the story of my wife waking up and praying for me and mommy blogs found that blog and it just went viral. This is when like, you know, when, if something went viral, it, it was like kind of a life changing thing for you. All these mommy blogs picked up this story and it was just getting shared everywhere. Shared, 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 shared. And all of a sudden I had all these guys messaging me on Facebook saying, dude, I feel the same way. Like, I feel like I'm in a rough spot in my marriage and I don't know what to do. I don't want to bail, but I'm like, I got to figure this stuff out. And so I was just taking all these guys who were messaging me and I thought we need to all put them in one place where they can talk to each other and encourage each other. So I started a Facebook group and it, Facebook just said, what do you want to call the group? So I just, you know, kind of as a joke was like dad tired they just all started talking to each other. And those guys said, Hey, Jared, you should start a podcast, which I didn't know anything about podcasts. I put my like Apple earphones in and recorded it into my phone. And I, I just continued to process like what I was trying to go through and uh, my, my experience with trying to fall back in love with the Lord again. And, uh, and it just blew up, man. Like a lot of, I think, I think it goes back to what you were saying at the beginning in men's ministry. All we've ever known is you are not doing a good job and you better start doing a good job. Behave better, behave better, behave better. And it's step an exhaust. Up. You got to step up. Exactly. Man, you got to step are, up. There are things called step up. Like if you could, you could probably Google step up ministry. I don't know if that's exact. I'm not throwing anyone under the bus, but like, it's a thing, right? We're right. always calling men just step up. And, and I just, uh, I, I wasn't doing that. And uh, I think a lot of guys related to it and, and resonated with it. They wanted to hear a message that called them to more without like, beating them over the head. And, um, and so it, it's, it's grown and it's, it's been a life changing thing for me. So it's grown. And this is your, this is your gig now this is how you pay the bills. That's it, man. Full time speaking, writing, podcasting. It's, it's completely changed my life. Layla has been, she was a nurse. She's, she's able to stay home now and be with our four kids. We've had two kids since, since all that happened. But, um, do you ever say to Layla, Layla, you got me on my knees. <laughs> oh yeah, she Layla. walked down the aisle. She I'm, walked down I'm the begging aisle. Darley, please. <laughs> she walked down the Layla. aisle to the uh, Clapton song, <laughs> acoustic version. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, that. Is, oh, she did. That was her entry yeah. song. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. No, you didn't sing that song, did you? For, no, for her? Okay. I, I mean, I was a I was a worship leader for a while, um, but I was more focused on uh, just being with my bride than yeah. singing songs that day. So you you hang out with a bunch of dudes virtually in person. You're one of the authorities on men. You're tapping into a really cool cool thing here that people are um, not meeting a, a need that people aren't meeting. I'm I'm doing events around the country with guys. I'm going down to Texas and also in Colorado because you know there's a there's some there's very few locations for a guy to be a guy and explore his faith at the same time or exhibit his faith. Yeah. And when I say by a guy, be a guy, I mean, just do normal guy things Yeah. versus church appropriate things. So right. we've got people who are with us right now. Let's treat, let's treat you, Jared Lopez, 
let's tr- let's treat you because this is what guys do. They make fun of each other. Let's let's treat I, you. I appreciate. It. I can tell you. <laughs> you can. You're loving the love. This, this is one of my love yeah. languages. I have five love languages. <laughs> one of them is verbal abuse. I appreciate. <laughs> uh, another one is nicknames. Another one is hitting. Another one is uh, sexual innuendo. Okay. And, and well, I'll just stick with my two. The, 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 the making fun and of it. Another and one. Nicknames. What's my fifth language, love language? Dude, I forget what it is. Anyway, uh, oh, sarcasm. That's what it is. Sarcasm. Okay. Which yeah. that is kind of sarcasm I'm doing right now. But let's imagine that you are. Um, you're the guy who's come back from the Mars. You've seen Martians, and all the rest of us are here in the aggressive life and. We need a we need a front lines report of what a guy is really thinking. What is he like? Just tell us what you're seeing. And I think a lot of guys who are listening are going to say, "Oh, me too." And a lot of women are going to go, "Huh, I mm. didn't know that." So educate us. What's why is it why is a dad tired? What's going on with the average guy? Yeah. So the guys that I hang out with, either virtually in person, uh, a lot of these guys are they have a high desire to be fully engaged dads and to be spiritual leaders of their home. They want to point their family to Christ and they don't feel like they've got the tools to do it. And, or, so the one, they either feel ignorant. Like I just do tell me what to do. Like, so they either feel that and, or they feel a ridiculous amount of shame and their shame is stopping them from engaging because they feel like, dude, how in the world could I tell my kids about God? How in the world can I pray with my wife or talk to my, my wife about God when I'm not even sure where I'm at, where I stand with God, because I'm buried in shame, either from past sin or present sin. And so they're just like, you know, they're paralyzed by it. Um, but I, I think the desire to be good dads is, and good men is really high. If, when I go, if I go out to the park today, I'll take my kids to the park when we're done with this conversation. When I go there, there are going to be dads there playing with their kids. There's going to be a lot of them. Like, th- and this is probably something we didn't see 50 years ago. Like, my dad wasn't, and those, and all his generation wasn't sliding down slides with kids. Most dads weren't doing that, and for sure, the grandpas weren't doing that. So it's kind of a new thing for dads to like. We're changing diapers. We're probably helping out with the dishes and we're like help maybe cooking around the house. And we're, we're trying our best to like, I want to be an engaged dad because maybe I didn't have a dad that was, he, he provided for me. Maybe he like, he showed up and he paid the bills, but he wasn't like, I couldn't really talk to him. You know what I mean? Like I was trying, I'm dealing with stuff as a teenager, young teenager, young adult, and I couldn't really talk to him. So now as guys, we have a high desire to do that. Um, but I think a lot of guys are like, dude, okay, but I'm still feeling stuck when it comes to pointing my family to Jesus, how do I do that? Like, and, and again, I think there's two reasons why, um, at least two. One of them is ignorance. They just never were taught how, and the other one is shame. And I think this shame one is huge. I think a lot of dudes are buried and uh, paralyzed by their shame. So like, shame over what? Shame over the, what, 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 what's the average guy considering? I mean, it's got to be something just beyond the standard porn. Come on, I, I, I'm just tired of talking about porn. We're not going yeah, to get here. But I, what, I what, think shame it, for what? I think shame that, um, I think shame of, it's not just porn, but porn is a big one. Shame of addictions, shame of vices, shame of like, I know, shame of, I know I'm supposed to be a better dad, but I'm not really. And I know, shame of, I can crush it at work, but when I come home, I don't seem to be able to crush it. Uh, I'm not as good of a husband or dad at home. Um, and yet when I go to work, I, I, like you tell me what to do and I'll, uh, and I'll kill it. But here I'm like, I'm not doing very good. And I know I should probably not snap at my kids, but I've snapped at them again. I've yelled at them again. And I know I should be pursuing my wife and laying my life down for her, but I'm not. Um, Cause I just really want to watch the game again. I just need a little bit of time. I've been working super hard. And so I could just use a little bit of time when I get home to like not have everybody ask something of me. And so there's just kind of this internal, I'm not the man I'm supposed to be. And I like what you said. I, I agree. I think we hone in on too many individual sins um, like, you know, let's just tackle your anger. Let's just tackle your lust issue, you know? And, but those, right. I always know, but I don't know if people can't see my hand, but I'm, I'm spreading all my fingers out and I'm saying those are all symptoms of a tree, you know, branches on the tree, but the roots of all of those things go much deeper. And I think guys just kind of, when they lay their head down on the pillar at night, pillow at night, they're just like, and I'm, I'm not the man I thought I was going to be at this right. point in my life. Wow. Yeah. And I said, talk about the porn. Um, obviously I'm I'm anti-pornography and I'm pro-talking about it to a degree. 
I just feel like for many people that that's really pushing it. When you actually talk about poor and demand, like, come on, that's a, that's an old message. Yeah, we got to deal with it. They got to deal with it. All that stuff. But it's it's just an example of let's push them. They got to do this. They got to do that better. And come on, you got to lay down your life. You got to. And I, man, I. Average dudes are just tired. That's yeah. what I'm hearing from you. They're just tired. You say shame. I th- I, I wouldn't disagree with you. Um, but t- well, actually, dad tired. There you go. <laughs> Goes hand in hand. You, you mentioned um, a shame shame around their vices. What 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 do you what do you mean by that? I mean whatever their vices. Again, I, I think uh, all of us. One of the messages that I teach probably most often to men is all of us are longing for something that will satisfy our soul more than Jesus can. It's the it's the deepest part root of our sin. Is there something that we believe? will give us more satisfaction in our soul than God. Um, It started in the garden. Is there something other than God that will satisfy my soul more than Jesus can? And and so whether that be, uh, man, if I could just take another fishing trip or just have another beer when I get home or watch that thing online, like whatever the thing is, all of us are chasing something that we think will give our soul satisfaction. And the message that I'm just like, the the drum that I'm going to, beat until I don't have any more breath in my lungs is um, until men can start to understand that the greatest satisfaction that your soul will ever experience is the satisfaction in Christ and your identity in him as a son that doesn't have to accomplish anything, but you're just deeply loved by the father. um, You'll keep chasing after all those other things to satisfy you. All right. So that's a good word. So with the examples you gave, it's not that the vice quote unquote vice is bad. It's that you're looking for something to do for you that only God can do for you. It's not that thing. You're putting that thing in the wrong place. Is that what you're saying? Well, well, some things some things are silly and some things are sinful. So some some things aren't bad. Like, dude, I love to go fish. I, I've, I've done it twice this week. Like, and so wanting to go fish again is not. There's there's nothing sinful about fishing, right? Um, so some some things are just like it could be silly. I, I've I've I have friends who are. I have a friend who has lost his marriage over fishing hmm. quite literally. Like okay. he, he fished too much. So, um, but fishing in itself is not, is not a bad thing, right? It's just, you know, but some things are sinful. Um, so there are sinful vices and we all know what those are. Right. Um, so I do think there's a, sometimes they're silly and sometimes they're sinful. But you're talking about elevating something to a status of idol. It being in both can yeah, happen. Yeah. Both the silly things and the sinful things can be elevated to the idol. I just think that's one of the ways that we've driven men away is we've, May, we've we've had them hurt. We've told them that any vice is not good. You should just have Jesus. And I just I just don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I mean, unless we're going to say at the same time, you're not allowed to have sugar in your coffee because you like it. You know, you have just awful coffee from now. Unless we're going to say from now, you're you're not allowed to have pizza. You should just be having Town Talk bread with ketchup squirt on. You can't like it. If you like it, then something's wrong with you. I just think there's a mess yeah. in the church about that. You know. And I have yeah, all kinds of, if you want me to talk about vices, I'll tell, I'll give you my, I got, I got a bunch of them and then I'll lose half my listeners and I'll probably do it anyway because I think we've really gotten this thing wrong on, on the, uh, the paranoia around something that you just like that you can't defend with a Bible verse. Well, I, I grew up in a culture, a church culture where, um, we were always trying to figure out what the line was. Can yeah. I say this? <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. I can say this, right. but I can't say this. Can I look at this? Or what about with my girlfriend? Can I do this, but not do this? Right, right. right. We're always looking for the line. So I think that's what you're describing. It gets anno- it gets overwhelming for guys like, well, am I allowed to fish? Am I not allowed to fish? Am I allowed to do this? Am I allowed to, you know, it's just, it's exhausting. I wrote a, I wrote a devotional called Stop Behaving. And the whole point was of Stop Behaving was, dude, God is after your heart. When, when I fall in love with my wife, you don't have to give me a list of things to do and not do what's okay and what's not okay. My love just pours out for her. Um, and so I, when you, when you begin to fall in love with Jesus, like you, you stop asking those, like, is this okay? Is that not okay? Like you just dude. sometimes I can fish in a sinful way. And sometimes I can fish and I'm like experiencing God in ways I've never experienced God. You know, we're asking the wrong question. When we're asking what's okay and what's not okay. How would one fish in a sinful way? Are you fishing naked and <laughs> playing with I your think worm? Going back to, what are you I, talking I think going about? Back to, I think going back to what my, I was saying about my buddy, he lost his marriage because he was escaping. I, I don't know what to do at home. So I'm going to fish every day to avoid being at home. I think that's sinful. 
right? Yep. Um, so that's what I mean by that. Great, great word. All right, how about, you mentioned a couple times in giving us a report back from Mars, which is I think is very helpful and enlightening for all of us. You mentioned spiritual leader. What, what are men expecting that they would do if they were the quote-unquote spiritual leader of the home? Just uh, educate, on that, on, educate us on that. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Even from a uh, if we set, if we set aside every spiritual thing, or all the religious stuff, and we just talked about dads engaging and initiating in their families, how much it it affects it changes culture. Um, there was a governor this last week that made uh, signed a bill about family, in particular about fathers, and was trying to put money towards engaging more fathers because they were seeing statistically in the data that when dads show up, crime rate goes down, um, domestic violence goes down, education is better, kids thrive in school, communities thrive when dads are engaged. So it was really interesting, even from a complete secular point of view, when dads show up and engage in their family, when they lead, um, everything changes. Now for us as believers, we would say, well, that was by design. Like this is how God designed it. So when I say spiritual leadership, I just mean, are you the first to engage? Are you intentional about engaging and initiating conversations about the things of God? doesn't mean you have a theology degree or you got, you're, you're sent down having two hour Bible studies with your three-year-old. It just means, are you the first to engage about the things of God? And dude, for us, that means when I'm out in the soccer field with my son, I'm talking about the things of God or when we're throwing a baseball or like I said, when we're fishing or when we're at a dinner table or when the guy cuts me off and I really want to flip him off. Like all these moments are discipleship moments. And when dads do that, when they, that's spiritual leadership. I would say spiritual leadership is not a 15 minute devotional before bed. It's as many 15 second moments as you can that you're just reminding your kids that they're part of a a different kingdom. Jared, that's fantastic. I've never heard it described that way. And that's really freeing. I love that. I'm taking notes on you now. Dads are the first to engage. Because I, I I interact with women all the time. Women come to me and they want to, they want me to get their husband in line. Yeah. They want to tell him to step up. And I'll, I'll say, well, what are you talking about? Say, well, he needs to be a spiritual leader of the home. I hear that all the time. The spiritual leader of the home. Yeah. And when I hear them talk about what they want, I have to say, you realize that if I was in your home, I wouldn't be leading your home. Right. Their expectations are typically off. Right. Yeah. Like, I never led Bible studies for my family. I did it twice, and both times people cried. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead serious. I'm dead, you can ask, ask any of my kids around it. But, but I was the first to engage. I've not thought about it that way. That's that's mm. really good, man. Well, here's the other thing about the the— I'm not beating devotional family devotional time. I, you know, if that's your, and I think some of that's just personality. Sometimes yes. guys are wired. They're like, they're eight, you know, they got the, they wake up at six and then they, they do this. And then at seven, they do this and eight, you know, they got, they're very structured. And so family structured Bible time is really good for them. I'm not, I'm God didn't wire me like that. So it's hard for me to do that kind of stuff and stay consistent. It can be dangerous is if we just have Jesus, you know, devotional time from seven to 8 PM every night with our kids what our kids could do is make the connection that, oh, we only talk about God or daddy only is interested in God from 7 to 8 p.m. before bed, as opposed to, man, daddy's talking about God when he just really wanted to yell at the guy who cut him off or daddy right. talks about God on the soccer field or daddy right. talks about God at the restaurant with the waitress or waiter. You know, So um, what I want my kids to know is Jesus, the Jesus thing is it's bleeding over everything in life. It's not just a 7 to 8 p.m. routine. Amen. Gosh, that's fantastic. Uh, have you done blogs on that topic there alone or episodes or that's, dude, that's, um, actually, I hope you have it because I'm just going to steal that from my own <laughs> and, I'm gonna, and, I'm gonna get, and I'm going to gain a lot of new followers <laughs> with that amazing idea. That's, that's fantastic. <laughs> Nothing new under the sun, man. I'm sure I stole it from somebody. No, I, you know, I've written chapters about it and we've done podcasts and stuff, but yeah, that's kind of the heartbeat of everything we're doing. What's your biggest learnings been from the podcast? Um, I think that, you know, it's, I don't know if it's a big learning. What's fascinating to me is how, how much guys want to share and yet um, they don't share it with guys at their church or in their, their faith community. It's really fascinating to me. And I think it goes back to what you were talking about at the beginning. Our churches have not created environments where guys are like being real with each other. And so they go online to find it. And I, I was just talking to a pastor about this the other week. Like, I, I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. Like, and sometimes I see the things our guys share 
in our community online. And I'm encouraged because I'm like, okay, they're, they're confessing, they're repenting, they're, they're doing hard work, soul work. And I'm encouraged by that. And then at the same time, I'm like, but dude, why didn't you do that with like your bro at church? Like, why didn't, are you in your community? You know, like, and so I don't know. I, I sincerely don't know how I feel about it yet. I, I think God's using it for his glory, but also I'm just, I guess, sad that we don't have churches and relationships, not many anyway, that provide that kind of environment where they feel like they can do that in person. Yeah, uh, I'm with you. Can I, can, I, can I make it a little less sad for a moment? Yeah, I'm interested to hear your perspective because I'm I'm still wrestling over it. Yeah, uh, you're, uh, well, first of all, I agree with you 100%. Uh, too few churches are a safe place that speak a masculine language to a masculine mind. Um, so uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm totally with you on that. But no, man, what you're what you're offering people is true and genuine connection. The church that I I serve, uh, my day job here at Crossroads. You know, we've done a lot of online things, and we've had a lot of people upset. Well, you get people are now streaming, and they're not coming to church, they're not coming to one of the sites, all that stuff. And we've uh, we just crossed over and said, there's different types of people. I'm dog food. They made their gajillions when they realized they had a person they were marketing to, and that person was a dog owner who would sleep with their dog. <laughs> and so they knew if you slept with their dog, with your dog, they could market to you and they could charge you high price dog food, and make a lot, a lot, a lot of money. The way it is now, and I think what you're doing right now, like for you, maybe your generation, you're just one generation below me, but still younger than me. Youth, youth probably think that someone, uh, this is a weird thing for these people to be just with you engaged online. Uh, it's not. I mean, uh, th- there's people who have, um, their their closest friends they've made online. And it's you're, you're, you're marking to somebody who not would sleep with their dog, but makes their friends online. We have, we have a person, a, uh, a guy I know on our staff, at his wedding party, he had two groomsmen in his wedding party. The first time he ever met them was in his wedding party. Wow. Because they had, but they had been incredible. close friends for years, just at a distance, not geographical, not, not just not geographical. So I'm saying, Jared, man, if you got if you got dudes who are who are engaging emotionally and spiritually, don't don't demean the physical thing. That's like that's like somebody who doesn't sleep with their dog demeaning somebody who does sleep with their dog. Dude, you're doing great. That's fantastic. I appreciate that. Today's podcast is brought to you by Athletic Greens. It's a product I use every day. I started taking AG1 because. I don't watch my diet too closely, but I know that I'm getting all the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients I can, as well as hydrating with 12 ounces of water right off the bat at the beginning of the day. One scoop of AG1 has got 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens, and it doesn't taste like it. It actually tastes great. AG1 is a micro habit with big benefits. For less than $3 a day, you can take care of your health and invest in your future. It's recommended by professional athletes, health experts, and me. (laughs) To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packets with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash aggressive life. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash aggressive life to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutrition insurance. So go get you some and let's get back to the show. All right, I'm going to have you be the guru for all of us. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a topic, Jared, and I'm going to have you, uh, you give us practical wisdom. You could say you're going to give us practical wisdom, or you could say you're going to pastor us. I want you to encourage the dads that are out there. Okay. Are you ready for this? Can you take this challenge, Derek? I'll give him my best shot. Let's All see right. what happens. Balancing work and home. These are short answers. You want just real quick uh, answers on these? Yeah. Well, this is not the lightning round, so you can take okay. as much time as you want. Yeah. Um, I, my first thought is don't balance it. Uh, tip the scales to family. Like, don't make it a balance. <laughs> don't balance the scales. I had a mentor tell me, Jared, you will have a million job titles before you die, knowing your personality. 
Um, but the only titles that you'll die with are husband, father, disciple, just go crush it at those. And he was a really successful guy. And so I just took those words to heart and thought, man, if there's anything I'm going to fail at, I'll fail at work and just be a really good husband, father, disciple. That's great. Finances. You're just borrowing. You're just borrowing. God's given you a bunch of money or some money or a few bucks or a ton of it. And uh, you're just borrowing it. And uh, at the end of it, he's going to ask you, what'd you do with my money? And how'd you expand the kingdom? And when we start to think it's ours, uh, we do weird things and we get weird and we get in a weird, we get in a weird mental space. But when I look at the money as I'm just borrowing this and the purpose of me borrowing this is for the glory of God, uh, it just views, it changes the way I view it completely. Sorry, I'm lightning rounding these, but these are just first thoughts. No, man, you're good. I, your first thoughts are good thoughts. Huh. Having a thriving marriage. Attack sin aggressively in your life. Just that for you as a dude, you know, it's not the shame stuff, you know, like, but just for you, you you're going for stuff, you're going through stuff as a man. You got sin crouching at your door constantly. Just to face it. Find a bro that you can just like, dude, I'm struggling with this, and just confess. There's confessing, confessing to God leads to forgiveness, right? We know that. If I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me. But James says, if I confess to a brother, there's healing. There are a lot of dudes who are forgiven, but they're not healed. And so maybe you've, you're like, dude, I've confessed this a million times to God. Maybe you just got to find a brother to confess it to constantly, repent often, and uh, so that you can experience healing. The other thing I would say is um, be quick to talk to your wife. Um, way, be faster than you want to. Oftentimes with guys, and I'll speak in my own experience in my own marriage, what, what happens is I'll kind of let that go, whether that thing she did or thing she said or the expectation she put on me. I'm just like, I'll let that one go. It's not really worth arguing about or talking about right now. All that is, is just a bitterness, bitterness seed that got planted. And then it just keeps getting watered and watered and watered. And all of a sudden you find yourself fighting over, she didn't pass the ranch the right way at the dinner table, you know, like uh-huh. something stupid. I don't know what it is, you know, but I mean, like, it's because you didn't deal with the, you planted the seed of bitterness and then you just let it go. So talk a lot way more than you want to about stuff that seems silly because the silly stuff now turns into huge stuff later. How about tips for or encouragement with having easy fun with the kids? Um, We just moved across the country. And so I'm always like, let's go explore. I, I took them go-kart racing. Hmm. We did a fishing charter trip. Like I'm just doing all these extravagant things draining my savings account. And they're like, that was fun. And then I took them on a walk yesterday and we shot hoops at the the park, like right around the corner. And I think they had just as much fun. Um, I think, man, our kids just so badly want daddy to be present. Yeah. And I don't think it, it requires a bunch of energy or, or I should say it requires energy. It doesn't take a lot of money or creativity to be fully present with your kids. Well, it never ends either. We We think that this need to have a good time with our kids is going to end when they're 16 or 18 or out of college, but it, it isn't. I mean, kids are still mm. looking every, every kid. And I'm still a kid right now, 56. Cause my dad's still alive. All of us want to be led. Well, all of us mm. want a dad that yeah. we want to be around all of us do. Yeah. So I, I know as a dad, I've got to spend creative energy thinking about that uh, with my kids and money. And it's great when it can only be a walk and it doesn't cost any money. But unfortunately, too often it does cost money. Yeah. I, you know what it was epiphany for me, man, was I realized God is such a good father and he doesn't need to do extravagant things in my life for him to be a good father. Sometimes him just being present yeah. and feeling his presence is like, man, he's a good father. And I was like, why do I feel like I always need to do extravagant things to be a good dad? Um, just be a present dad like the father is to you. And uh, so that was really helpful. Yeah, we're not the cruise journey. director. You know, we don't have to fill yeah. every minute of their day with Instagramable moments. Yeah, totally. I One thing I do, I've, I've said in my calendar, I, I have four kids. So um, for I guess for any guy listening that still has kids at home, this has been really helpful. I do two things. One is um, every four nights of the week, I take one of them on a walk, even my one-year-old, um, just one-on-one time with dad. And we walk around the, you know, a couple blocks together. And so they look forward to that every week, like Monday, my son gets to walk with daddy Tuesday, my daughter, you know, and so on. And uh, those, that's been, that's turned into be really special time, huge bonding 
with my kids one-on-one. It's just so simple. Just go on a walk. And then the other thing I do is I block out their birthday days and we go do something a little bigger. So 22nd of every month is my son's birthday. We go out and have ice cream on the 22nd of every month, you know, just simple stuff, but that one-on-one time. How old are your kids? 10, eight, three, and one. All right. Are you done? Uh, I think so. <laughs> I could be talked out of it. You know, we have a one-year-old, so it's exhausting. We have and a three-year-old right now, so it's exhausting. But um, but I, I could easily be talked into having more. I love being a dad, man. And you moved from where to where? We just moved from Portland, Oregon to Hilton Head, South Carolina. So literally across the entire Wow. Country. And what made you choose yeah. Hilton Head? Um, Sun the beach nearby. It's 80 something degrees here today. It was 30 something degrees in Portland when I woke up, you know, and checked the weather. So I was just like, my kids were in the house nine months out of the year. Ugh. It's just raining constantly. Plus the crime, Portland's getting weird. It's hard. You can't take your kids out anywhere. And, you know, we came here, it was sunny. It was beautiful. You can go to the beach. We go to the beach now, you know, every week and just, a, it's a, it's a really fun place to raise kids. I would think that the culture of those two towns is palpably different for you and your kids. True? Oh yeah. I mean, Portland's uh, yeah, out yeah. there, right? They're 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 out there. Oh, Port, Portland's at the tip of the spear in the uh, in setting cultural weirdness. I mean, the Portland's brag about their slogan in the city is "Keep Portland Weird," and they take it to a whole nother level. Like it's kind of funny at first, but it gets it gets like bizarre. Yeah, B- because that bleeds into it turns in from like keep it weird. Let's have fun too. Now it's bleeding into values. I grew up in California in the Bay area. I like kind of missional being seen, but like, you can't even have a conversation. If there's even a hint that you love Jesus or you got a religious bone in your body, you're just, you are completely irrelevant. There's no conversations being had, Mm. but God is, I've got friends there who are still doing great work for the kingdom. Um, but we decided to come out here. And you didn't know anybody in, in Hilton Head. You just liked the location. Yep. That's cool. Yeah. So your, your podcast, your blogs, is that paying all your bills? Is your wife working as well? No, she's home. Yeah, this, by God's grace, paying our bills. Yeah. Dirt, what am I doing with my life? My podcast isn't paying for all my bills, Dirt. What the heck is going on? What are we doing wrong? What are we doing wrong? <laughs> I'm, I'm not able to just move anywhere I want across the country and just do whatever the heck I want to do because my podcast. What do I got to do to grow up and be like George, Jared Lopez? Lopes. Lopez. George Lopez. Uh, <laughs> that would have been funny. Uh, you, should, you got the wrong guy. George Lopez. Get him on. He'll probably tell you exactly what to do. Um, no, I don't mean we're a nonprofit. I mean, we're a nonprofit ministry. People have been really gracious to give, but writing books, we've had some successful books has helped and speaking engagements help and you know, things like that. But, All right. So you're not driving yeah. it through your ad revenue from podcasts. Ads help have, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's help. Yeah. That's good. All right. I could still be jealous of you, Jared. Good for you. <laughs> and it's good, man. I, 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 man, talk about a great thing when a dude is building into dads and he's doing mm-hmm. well and you can move on that. And dude, that's great. That's, that's, that's just awesome. I'm happy for you. Thank you, man. Let's talk about some of your quotes, which are pretty, uh, pretty cool, I think. I'll just give you a quote, and then you uh, say a little bit more about it, if you don't mind. Okay. You say, you may not have led well yesterday. You may forget to lead well tomorrow, but don't let that stop you from leading well today. Yeah, most of these quotes that you're reading are me like reminding myself of something yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I wrote them. Um, and that actually came from uh, a thought that I had because I often will approach any kind of consistent thing. I'll always tie it back to like diet and exercise. And I get paralyzed by like, should I start getting back into eating well and exercising today? Cause I know I'm probably going to fall off the bandwagon next week. And that thought stops me from jumping in today. And so I think the same thing happens in spiritual leadership. It's like, dude, I, I'm no, I've got a reputation of being inconsistent. And so you know, I'll get my kids all excited about talking about Jesus today. And next week, I'm going to not even talk about it anymore. So I probably just shouldn't even do it. And you should do it. You should, regardless of what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or next month, you should still engage and initiate conversations about the kingdom with your kids today. You said most discipleship happens in 15 second moments, not 30 minute devotionals. That's back to your, your, your first to engage comment you had. I, I made little bracelets for guys to wear that just said 15 seconds. And it was just a reminder for guys to like, keep thinking like, dude, fifth, just do 
15 seconds. Find 15 seconds to point your kids back to Jesus as many times as you can today. Because the 15 minute devotional thing can feel really overwhelming, but 15 seconds, you can do 15 seconds of pointing your kids back to Jesus. It, and little stuff like, I remember when my son was young and we were playing soccer. I was coaching his team and the sunset, you know, it was one of those sunsets that was insane. You know, just like the, the sky was just crazy colors. I just went down into his little ear and I was like, man, God is crazy good artist, isn't he? Look how creative God is. And he was like, whoa, yeah. And we went right back to playing soccer. That was it. But I'm just trying to take, and it was just me practicing. I'm just trying. How can I take this little moment and point his eyes back to the king and to the kingdom as many times as I can? I think that's what Deuteronomy is talking about. The official theological word is the great Shema. You know, speaks to dads and, um, you know, teach your sons when you rise, when you lie down, when you walk. I mean, all these different poses, just the idea, hey, dad, just uh, be giving your kids any God talk you can in any single situation you can think of. Simple stuff. Jesus didn't say, hey, guys, meet me at Starbucks at 7 a.m. every Tuesday and we'll read the Torah. He just was teaching about the kingdom as they went. Oh, look at this wheat field. Let's talk about this. Oh, this person's here. Uh, they, they're crippled. Let's talk about the king. Like he's just always on the fly talking about the kingdom in the moment. I think that's, we make discipleship. We over-spiritualize it. We make it weird in, in ways that we don't have to make it. So if someone's going to start getting into your sort of universe here, wh- wh- where would you recommend they start, Jared? The Dad Tired podcast or your book, Dad Tired and Loving It, or a devotional, Stop Behaving, or your leadership program? Wh- where do you think people should start? Um, I think the podcast is the easiest point of entry. Just like, you know, if they're listening to this, they're probably a podcast listener. Just listen to the podcast. We bring in guys every week and we try to talk about this stuff. Um, and then the Dad Tired and Loving It book, I wrote that in a way that's like, I know most guys don't have time to read or they're not readers or they're, they're busy. You know, they can even do it on audiobook too, but um, it was written for the tired and busy guy. That's good. Now we're ready for the lightning round. Okay. Now like we're ready. ready. Here we go. Lightning, Are you ready? Lightning mode. A yeah. dad you look up to. Oh man, I'm going <laughs> to... Um, I won't get, I was going to give a really spiritually cliche answer, but say um, Jesus. I'm, trying to be more, say Jesus. I'm trying to be more like the father. <laughs> I really am. Um, but I will say I had a mentor. His name was Monty and I didn't know he was discipling me. He was, he was discipling me without me knowing it. Um, uh, he, he forever shaped me as a man. Best first step for new dads. For a brand new dad. One thing I always tell brand new dads is guys, I experienced this and I've, I've known a lot of guys who experienced this. Your wife carries that baby, most likely is nursing that baby or, you know, providing substance for that baby. And they are bonding in a way that is just like on another level. It's crazy what is happening biologically, mental, psych, psych, everything is in the bonding realm. You'll feel behind and then you might feel guilty. Like, oh yeah, I would. How come I'm, I'm, just, I'm trying, I feel attached, but this newborn, like, I'm not sure what to do. Most guys bond shoulder to shoulder. So when that baby starts to be able to sit up and roll a ball with you and go on a walk, or you can take it on a walk in a stroller, like it's okay if you're a little bit behind on your wife and the bonding stuff. I think there's just some natural biological stuff happening there, but man, be engaged, serve your wife well in those early years and practice preaching the gospel to your little one when they don't even know what you're saying because it will help you by the time they're older and when they do. Okay, you're breaking the rules of the lightning round. You mentioned the lightning round. I figured you knew the rules of the lightning round. (laughs) But that's okay. I let you go because that's uh, that was deep stuff. You never... <laughs> okay. My bad. My bad. No, it's not your 30 bad. seconds. 30 seconds. Here we go. No, it's not your bad. It's good. Well, I will say, I'll just add on. We'll, we'll hit the pause button and lightning round for a minute. I'll just add on that one, too, for any guy who's who does feel that. Um, what goes around comes around because your wife is going to be jealous of you for the rest of her life because dad has a yes. power over children that mom just can't compete with. I don't understand it. Yep. I don't like it. I wish it wasn't that way. Yeah. But there's going to come a day when your wife is going to be very, very frustrated that your kids look to you for words first and your kids look to you for affirmation first. There's something about the power of a dad. So kind of enjoy these days when you're in second place. Couldn't agree. I know we're in line around, but I couldn't agree. My, my, there's a joke now with my wife where she says, I want to keep having babies because I only get them for two years and then they're <laughs> yours. You get to, you know, they love you. They, they're daddy. They're all daddy about daddy. So yes, I agree. 
All right. How about something you're learning right now about being a dad? Mm. I, I think, man, one of the things I'm learning right now, this is, I, I know we're in the lightning round. I'm supposed to be going quick here, but my, um, we're experiencing a lot of grief in our family, in particular with grandparents um, who are in their last days of life here. And, um, and so I'm learning and I, I have no, I've been trying to give answers that are helpful for the guy or whatever. I have no good answers on this. I'm learning how to grieve well in front of my kids. And I'm, I'm sincerely learning. I haven't come to any arrival or conclusions. I'm just right now I am learning. What does it look like to suffer and to grieve in front of your kids and to still try to point them to Jesus? Best practical dad hack, you know. Oh man, uh, if you still have little ones, you <laughs> this is not spiritual at all. Uh, you use the diaper as the first wipe. So many guys. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> absolutely. I know. I've watched a lot of young dads. You know, using too many wipes, man. Use that diaper right. as that first wipe. No, the diapers for diapers. The wipe. Yeah, right. Multitask. No question. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the other thing I would say, I, I know I'm I'm doing terrible on the lightning round. Uh, the other dad hack is invite your kids to do the stuff you're already doing with you. You, you, st- you keep saying good stuff like that. You keep breaking the rules the, of the lightning round. That's totally fine. How about, even though you're not one right now, how about empty nester dads? Are you hanging out with many of them? And if so, what advice do you have for empty nester dads? Oh, man, I love this demographic. Your ministry in the kingdom is just getting started. You are not phasing out. You're in the sweetest season. I can't wait to be in that season. God is, you're, you're in the sage season. You're in the wisdom. You get to bring all that life experience, all those failures, all those learnings for us young dads and to disciple the church, the next generation. Please don't give up. Please don't collect seashells and go on golf tournaments. Every, like We need you, man, to engage in the church. I need you as a young dad to pour into me. Um, don't give up. You're just starting in ministry. Words for a dad who believes that they've just blown it. It's over for them. What do you say to them? Uh, you have blown it. <laughs> you have blown it. Come uh, on, you can't give straight talk like that. No, say something nice and flowery. You are a screw up, a very, very significant yeah, screw up. Yeah, yeah. You've blown it, man. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, what... I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to go a little longer on this answer, not lightning round. But dude, uh, if you're buried by your shame, you're worshiping the wrong God because the God of the Bible is always near broken and messy people. He takes those broken, messy people. He redeems them and then uses them for his glory. And so have you blown it? For sure. You've screwed up royally, but God did not bail on you. That is the good news of the gospel. He should have bailed. He could have bailed. He didn't bail. Instead, he's pursuing you. Now draw near to him and be used by him for his glory. Jared, this has been fantastic. If someone wants to follow up with you or get inside of your orbit, how could they do that? Yeah, dadtire.com. You'll find everything we're doing there. Well, brother, is there, is there anything that you want to talk about that we haven't talked about yet? I've, I've enjoyed this a lot. Anything that we should have brought up? No, man. These were great questions. A really, really good conversation, man. I, I, you're doing a good work and I think we hit a lot of good stuff for guys to chew on. I appreciate you having Well, I'm not doing good enough work because my podcast isn't funding my lifestyle. So I'm not doing a good enough work. Dirt. Hey, if you've got a producer that helps you, if you could shoot him my way, that'd be really good. I'll trade you. I'll trade you dirt for you. Probably got somebody who takes baths or something like that. Oh, God. Uh, you're doing a good job behind the scenes, man. I don't know you, but you're doing a good Listen job. Listen to him, dirt. He's fathering you. He's fathering you. He can't stop fathering. He's still fathering you from afar. <laughs> no, that's great. All right, man. Uh, hey, Jared, this has been fantastic being with you. Hey, guys. Well, or ladies, this would be one might be interesting for you to shoot by a man that you know. Uh, he'll, he'll be encouraged. Your, your stock will go up. So you might want to think about that. And guys, man, there's something here that's good for you. I know I I heard some. I heard a bunch of good things today. Be the first to engage. That's really strong. That's gonna be a new new piece of nomenclature. I'm gonna run through my mind with my kids, who are all out of the nest. I'm I'm that empty nester, and making sure I continue to do that. that that's great stuff. So hey, do something, guys. Do something, ladies. 
We don't, we don't have the aggressive life to have, ooh, interesting thoughts I just heard. I heard this guy say this interesting thoughts. No, we're giving you interesting thoughts so you can do interesting things. Go out, get moving, change your life. We'll see you next time on The Aggressive Life. Hey, thanks for listening. For all things aggressive living, why don't you head over to bryantome.com. Find my new book, Move, a guide to get up and go forward, as well as articles and much, much more. And no matter where you listen to podcasts, why don't you take a second and leave us a rating, leave us a review. It really, really helps us drive new listeners to the show. We want to help as many people as possible, just like we may have helped you. We want to help others. So why don't you help us out? And if you want to connect, find me on Instagram, at Brian Tome. Aggressive Life with Brian Tome is a production of Crossroads Church, Cincinnati, Ohio.